Hi, this is Digital Bike Computing. I'm going to show you how to add a iSCSI uh, drive or storage using your Netgear Readiness device and then share it with Windows or VMware. Okay, so I'm doing this on a 314 Readiness, but the process is similar across the Readiness fleet. So we just go into iSCSI. Okay. Firstly, log in, of course, log into your profile, log in as an as a admin, go into iSCSI. And you'll see in there currently we've got no assigned LUNs. So what a LUN is, if I expand that, a LUN is essentially uh, a bit of storage from your NAS device that we are going to assign to a device so that it sees it as an actual hard drive, as actually separate external storage. Okay, so what we want to do is you want to click on new LUN. Okay, now we're going to give this LUN a name, so let's just call it for now test LUN. This is a test LUN. Okay, for the description, we leave this as is. We shouldn't need compression unless you're really low on space, but then it has to be thin provisioning, which we'll go over in a second. Snapshotting, do you ever want it to get backed up? We're going to say we want it backed up weekly and whether if it's thick or thin. So thick, we're gonna say we want it to be 20 gig, and that's what it's gonna be, 20 gig, and that's how much we're assigning to it. Or thin, we're saying we want it also to be 20 gig, but we're only gonna give it one gig, and then as it fills up, we're gonna give it all extra space, you know, so the drive will grow essentially until it hits 20 gig. So we're just gonna give it a full 20 gig from the very start. 20 gig, and create. So that will create the LUN. The next thing we want to do is we want to add that LUN into a group. Okay, so what you can do is you can create multiple LUNs in here, which will appear as multiple hard drives or multiple storage on a device. So then we say new group, and we'll call it test group. Okay, and then we're going to click on the test LUN that we created, and we're assigning it to a group which in our case is going to be test group and apply. Okay, you'll see that we've got here a target. This is a essentially a IQN number, so it's going to be unique to this group. So if we select it and we click on settings, okay, that's the, let, the LUN settings. We want to select test group and go into properties to edit the properties of the group. Now here you'll see that there's a target IQN number. So this is essentially a unique number that once we've set this up, it'll broadcast onto your network and other devices that have got iSCSI um, cards. So for example, on Windows, an iSCSI initiator or in um, VMware, you can actually add an iSCSI um, storage adapter to actually detect iSCSI storage. As long as everything's on your network, it should pick it up automatically. You can also create what's called CHAP authentication if you want to go in and actually give it further authentication. We're not going to go over that for now. So allow initiator, we're going to say any. So we want all to go through and apply. And that's really it. So we've now created that iSCSI um, LUN and we've assigned it to a group. And now we're going to go and detect it on our device. Okay, so if I open up my Windows Explorer under computers, you'll see that I've just got a C drive in there and that's it. So first thing we're going to do, we're going to open up control panel. Okay, start control panel. And in here we've got an iSCSI initiator. Now I've already run this before. So you'll see that I've got two detected. This is a IQN number. So this is essentially going to be a unique number for a particular, in my case, a LUN on a uh, NAS device. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is you need to actually look for that target. All right, so you'll have a device. So in my case, I'm going to do 172.16.1.50. I know that that is the IP address of my NAS. Okay, and I'm going to go quick connect. It's going to do a quick search and it's found two devices. Okay, so we're just going to say done for now. So two devices are here. I've got a test group and a LUN group. Okay, now I know for a fact that the test group 
is the one that I've got active and the one that I want to use on this Windows server. So I'm going to select it and say connect. Okay, I'm going to leave that as default and OK. And that is connected. That's the first good sign. If you do get a message like this one, authorization failed or something similar, then it's more than likely you haven't enabled uh, or like you haven't enabled it properly on your SAN or on your NAS or you could have um, permissions issues, that sort of thing. So go and search that, make sure that you've got the permissions are the same. If you're using AD, that the authentication is the same, that you're using same username and password across your devices as well. If when you go to target and you click quick connect and nothing shows up, it could be that you've got some issue on your network somewhere. So what you wanna do is you wanna ensure that your storage and your computer are on the same IP range, same subnet range. Um, if they're on DHCP, make sure that they're on the same range, detecting the same range of IP. Okay, so in my case, 172.116, 172.16, sorry, 1 dot whatever. Okay, and I know my storage and my server are both on the same network. So that's been detected. Okay, that's the first step. So now Windows knows that there's some sort of device trying to connect to it. So that's it on that side. Okay, iSCSI initiator. Next thing we want to do is we now add the drive. So if we go into Windows Explorer again, you'll see that it just has a C drive. So we want to go start, right click on computer, and we want to go into manage. Okay, okay, let's just go one step back. So you want to navigate to storage and disk management. Now you may get a message saying that it's detected a device, which you saw before. Just say okay to that if it's the case. If you don't get a message, it's okay. But what you'll see, it's now actually found some sort of a device that is 20 gig, okay? That is actually the LUN size that I've created on my NAS to be 20 gig, okay? So all I do is I right click and say, initialize my disk. I want it to be an MBR, disk one, okay? And that's it, it's found it. And now I right click and I want to create a new simple volume. I'm going to go through 20 gig, assign it a drive letter, format it in NTFS, quick format, etc and finish. Just gonna format that drive. And if all things go well, we should now have an additional 20 gigabyte drive on Windows. So it will now finish, it's say healthy primary partition. If I close out of that, inside here now, I've now got a new drive. So according to Windows, Windows doesn't know any better. Windows thinks that it's just a drive that's attached to it directly, but because we've got the iSCSI initiator, you're actually bypassing the local storage there, and it's looking out on the network and finding there's an iSCSI drive, which in our case is a LUN on the NAS. So that is it. You can now use that drive as normal attached storage, uh, add stuff to it, and you're good to go. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel, Digital Byte Computing. Thanks.